What's up guys, in this video we're going to be adding a file explorer to NeoVim. Um, if you know about file explorers in NeoVim, then you know that there's like one main one that pretty much everybody uses, and that's NerdTree. Um, we're not going to be using NerdTree because I think there's a better option out there. We're also not going to go the super minimalist approach and use NetRW because that thing, that thing sucks. So what we're going to do is we're going to use um, a explorer that's built into uh, COC since we're already using COC. So as always, you can find all the commands that I'm going to run in this video over on my blog. Um, so let's get started. So installing COC Explorer is going to be a little bit different than um, the way we've installed plugins before because this isn't really a plugin. This is an extension to COC. So what we'll do is open up, um, just open up them, and we will run COC, and you've got to make sure you have COC installed first, and I have a video on that. Uh, if you look at my IntelliSense video for VS Code, then what you'll do is you'll run COC install, and then COC explorer. I think I spelled that right. All right, we'll give that a minute. Let's see. All right, so once you see this, you're good to go. Now what we'll do is we'll get out of there and we'll open up um, the, the COC settings.json. So COC settings.json. And this is where, if you remember from the last one, we keep our COC preferences, like format on save and all that kind of stuff. What I actually learned recently was that you can come in here and it'll auto-complete things for you. So it already knows all of its settings built in. Once you install the COC JSON um, extension, this COC settings.json knows about all the things that it can do. So you can start to see if we start typing Explorer now, okay, well, we have all the options that we can change for our Explorer, and there are a lot of them. Uh, so if you want to see some of those options, and I bet this is small, so let me zoom in a lot. I don't know why it changes. Be small. Anyway, um, so all of these options are on the COC Explorer page, and so there, there's a bunch of them, right? You probably don't want to change a lot of them. I've only changed like a couple. Um, so let me go back. I'll probably leave a link to this page in the description, but the way that you get to this thing is, or you get to the COC Explorer uh, page, is you can just look it up and find it on GitHub. But it's also one of the extensions in COC, so um, if you remember from the last video, you can just go through all the extensions and you can find this. So let's get back to this. So I'm just going to copy and paste this in, but you can explore different uh, things that you can add. Whoops, I forgot. I put it in my buffer. Uh, let's go over here. All right, and we'll just indent this. So it's like that. Actually, I think what was wrong was it should be like this. There we go. All right, we'll save that. And so what did I add? So default, the Explorer width when you open it opens at 40. I changed it to 30 to make it a little bit smaller. I'm also enabling nerd font. If you have nerd font installed, then I'm pretty sure all of this will just work for you out of the box. And essentially, that's just going to get us nice icons on the side. And preview action on hover. You know what I'll do is I'll set this to true first so you can see what it gives you. So maybe you want that, right? Um, honestly, I think it just kind of gets in my way. And then I'd like to be able to toggle it with like a key, but I don't think they give that option yet. And then just a couple same defaults that I just think make using the tool a little bit easier. So V for V split um, and enter. The CR stands for enter. We'll just open it like normal instead of seeding into, into it. All right, the next thing that we'll do is we'll open up our plug config for COC. And we're just going to add any COC extension that we add. We're just going to add it to this file, right? So if we ever want to get rid of COC, we can just like nuke this file and call it a day. Although I don't foresee myself getting rid of this anytime soon. So actually, instead of typing that out, we'll just copy and paste this into there. And then I'll explain what these commands do. The first two are very simple. 
to understand. Um, so now this first one, uh, when you press space uh, and then E, what it'll do is open the Explorer. When you press space F, it'll open the Explorer in floating mode, and I'll show you what that looks like. And then this last command is just so, okay, when you close all of your buffers and all of your windows and all that good stuff, um, and when COC Explorer is the last thing that's left, close it automatically. So that's what that does. All right. So let's save that. And now everything should just work. So let's open up, I don't know, in a .vim. Now we can type space E, and here we go. So you can see this thing here, um, this little like preview. This is what I set to true a second ago. And by default, it's true. And it gives you some in interesting things like time access and modified and time period. I just find that it gets in my way though. So it's just, I don't know, I'd like to see it, but I'd like to just press a button to see it or something like that every now and then. Um, so I end up disabling that. So I'm gonna go in here really fast. And the preview action on hover, we're gonna just set it to false. All right. Now, so next time when we come in here, that'll be false. Now, also you'll notice these guys over here, this M, M, D, whatever. What this is, is it's Git integration. So M stands for modified, D stands for deleted. So I deleted something out of here since my last push. Uh, a will be for added, a question mark I think will be for unstaged. You can find all of that uh, in, in, the, in the docs. So if you go down here and you look for like Git icon, and you can set your own Git icons, right? Like Git icon added is a capital A, deleted is that capital D. Um, renamed, you'll see an R. So if like I rename a file, copied, unmerged, so on and so forth, right? Um, untracked was the question mark. So so those will all be there. And I like that it just has automatic Git integration and it, I just think it looks decent, it makes sense, it's mnemonic, so that's cool. Also the icons, that nerd font is what got us the cool icons. So that's um, something I like. Uh, trying to think what else. Oh yeah, what's cool about this too is the buffers here at the top. So like you can see your buffers, you can open them up. So we can already move between, well I'll get to that in a second, but we can already move in between our buffers. Like when we're in here, we can just press tab and move between our buffers, right? But an easy way to delete like a buffer um, that's open and you don't wanna see it anymore is you just press D on it and then it got rid of it. Now it takes a second to refresh, but yeah, see, now it's gone. Um, I think it also, that four definitely stands for something. Um, I think it maybe is the amount of lines that I added or something. I don't really know what that four stands for. Now, something else that this thing does, because this thing does a lot of things, um, is you can press tab and get all of the options to do things. Like you can add a directory, add a file, CD into one of the directories to make it the root collapse one, do all these things, right? So just press tab and it'll open up a fuzzy finder for things that you wanna do. So I can start typing like add file, all right? And then it'll ask me for a file name and then I can just enter the file name and you know put a file in if I wanted to. Um, what else? Yeah, so here's another one, because um, this thing really does a lot of things. So we'll go into mappings.vim, why not, right? And let's add some nonsense in here and save. All right, now it's letting me know that there's an error in here. And so that's pretty useful in my opinion because now you can just like kind of see throughout all of your things like, oh, okay, there's, there's an error in there, right? Um, we can close the directory and still see that there's an error in the directory. So you can see all through your code, like if something's not working or whatever, it's debugging it for you, which is nice, right? And I'm getting this because I have Vim LSP installed. So if you remember from the IntelliSense video, all right, so we got rid of that. Um, trying to think what else. Oh yeah, the floating thing. So we'll press uh, sh we'll press space E to get rid of it. And then we'll press space F. Wait, <laughs> uh, I may have mapped them by accident to the same thing. Let's jump to the bottom here. Or let's go to um, uh, general settings. Oh wait, no, it was in a COC settings. And it should actually be opening in float mode. Uh, 
Ah, preset floating not found. Okay. So I think that's what that other thing was then. So then the other option is to, if you want to add floating mode, is you can come up here and it looks like they give you this, this thing here, right? So if we take this and we add it under the Explorer section, all right, and we'll just save and quit. And we reopen this. Now if I press Shift F, I get a floating window. Um, and that's pretty interesting too. So I'll also update the blog so that you can uh, copy and paste this into your COC settings. I think this is cool, um, but I don't think I'll use it. So maybe actually I won't put that in the blog. If you want it, you can go grab it. Um, I just, I have better things that I'd rather float in the middle of my screen. And yeah, so also I find it every now and then when I was using it before, it was a little bit buggy, but actually it seems pretty good now. So I don't know, it's kind of cool, right? But it's like if I open this up, I guess it'll just close itself immediately. That's pretty neat, I guess. It's it's cool, but I don't know. You can I guess you can let me know what you think about the floating window. Uh, other than that, I think that's mainly it for this video. That kind of shows off all the things you can do, uh, or at least a lot of the basics, at least probably most of what you want to do with a file explorer, a simple file explorer. Um, so you can also follow my development on this thing over on uh, my GitHub. It'll be under NVim. Um, I'm open to pull requests if anyone wants to make one. Um, let's see. And yeah, so you can kind of follow it in real time as I'm working on this thing. And I think we're getting pretty close to like a VS Code like text editor. So um, there's probably like four or five more plugins that I want to install before I really feel at home in this thing. So as always, you should like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.